Big questions answered briefly. Welcome back, Mere Mortalites, to another edition of the Mere Mortals book reviews. You have one here, and what we do at these book reviews is to try to dissect, find the interesting pieces of books that perhaps you might want to read them as well, Mere Mortalites, and we try to discuss and find our personal views as well towards these books. And today, I have Stephen Hawking's brief answers to the big questions. That right. Big questions, brief answers. So, before we actually get started on the book itself, I probably wanted to cover who Stephen Hawking is because to some people out there, um, you might not know specifically who it is. You might know him perhaps as the the man who was in a chair, in a wheelchair and who would use a computer to actually speak. And this particular book doesn't go into the details of who Stephen Hawking is. There's actually quite a lot of books and even a movie about who Stephen Hawking actually is. Um, but at the back of the book, just to give you a, a bit of a heads up on who he actually is, he was a brilliant theoretical physicist and is generally considered to have been one of the world's greatest thinkers. Uh, He held the position of Lukashian Professor of Mathematics at the University of Cambridge for 30 years and is the author also of A Brief History of Time. And that was the book that really put him um, front and center to the rest of the population and humanity in general because he was quite well known uh, as a physicist, but that's probably what brought him into the forefront of general population and consumption um, and to all the rest of the books that he actually created. So, Stephen's um, brief answers to the big questions. This is actually not a book that he himself finished off in writing. Um, to actually put it in a, do believe that it's written just at the front here as well from a, from the publishers. It was actually done. He was actually regularly asked big questions by everyday people, scientists, senior business people, you name it. And he actually had written down quite a few notes. And what they have done here is compiled it all together to make a book. So drawing it together from his personal archive, it was something that they were working through at the time of his death. So unfortunately, Stephen has passed away. But this is a compilation of a lot of his notes and existing items that he had put together to create a book. And we'll make that as note because sometimes um, that can work out well and other times might not. Um, So that's really just a a bit of a background check on that. To the actual uh, synopsis. So the book itself treats four main subjects and that's why we're here, will we survive, will technology save us or destroy us and how can we thrive? Now within that, there's actually 10 key questions and that's the the big questions to name through on the book itself and the title and those are reading them through. Is there a God? How did it all begin? What is inside a black hole? And he should know. Can we predict the future? Is time travel possible? Will we survive on Earth? Is there other intelligent life in the universe? Should we colonize space? Will artificial intelligence outsmart us? How do we shape the future? Um, and what it, he does is in each section, he briefly, and it's very brief to be to be quite honest with you, I do believe that the book in itself is roughly, let me put it up, around 200 pages in length, maybe a little bit more than that. And so if each of those test questions, if you kind of rough it out, it's around 20 pages per question to be answered. And the book is meant to be consumed by everyday population. It isn't a deep scientific book, although there are a few pages here and there that might Uh, if you enjoy that deep technical conversation, perhaps around M theory and string theory, there are glimpses into some more hardcore physics, if you'd like, or topics in in therein. But because these are brief answers, they're answered quite generally. They're answered quite uh, openly, uh, I guess, socially across all cultures can understand. So there are some questions in this book that perhaps you as a reader might find that you need to dissect a little bit more. Um, But the way that it's those big key questions, it does seem to impact and touch on the broad ideas that many individuals might think around, oh, I wonder what this is. And Stephen puts not the, I guess, the generally uh, accepted view, I guess, in this particular book, it is his views. It is the views of his notes, as you can remember, as it's compiled in that way. It's his views on that particular question or how he would answer or might answer it for an individual. And it also is influenced by his thoughts, his ideas of what the future may look like. So one of the key themes in here as well, um, in terms of jumping ahead, is around uh, gene editing. And so you'll find that Stephen talks around gene editing into the future. And perhaps you might be opposed to that. Um, this particular book doesn't go into the details of, okay, what's the opposing view? It, uh, it is quite brief answers into his regard. 
Beside that though, beside those big questions, there isn't any uh, large pieces of of introduction or conclusions or elaborations beyond that. And that kind of makes sense given the fact that this book was compiled of of notes and perhaps existing early drafts of what the book may be into a, a something that could be could be read. And that takes us uh, into some of the themes of the book book itself. And uh, I'm actually going to combine it into some the personal observations as well, because I think it, it is um, probably a good thing to do with this particular book. And one is the, it's a repetitiveness that this book compiles within it. So one of the things that I, I noted this in a previous uh, book that I uh, read not too long ago, and I've also encountered this with books that are compiled from notes from lectures and indeed Kyron, uh, other mere mortal has also found this as well you end up finding that some of the chapters and indeed some of the you know you've only got 20 pages to our out of a brief answer and there will be repetitions of perhaps what Stephen thinks or in, information from its past that has already been brought up and that usually does point to the fact that hey there's repetitiveness because it hasn't been created as a whole standing book. It has been compiled all together. Um, so you do notice some of that repetitiveness, which just take away when the book is so short already in terms of how powerful it can actually hit. Um, the other theme, I guess, that I wanted just to talk through on that one is the focus on things like string theory on this particular book. So it's, and I mentioned it already, string theory, gene editing, uh, it, sh- it shows the the thoughts on the matter from his perspective, from Stephen's perspective. Now, I'm no physicist and I cannot tell you what are the, you know, the what are the other abundant uh, theories of the universe where it comes of you know the big crunch or does it keep on expanding or there's something else beyond M theory which talks about you know eleven different time dimensions uh, sorry not time dimensions different eleven different dimensions that could be possibly through the mathematics of it right so there could be other theories there could be other possibilities is very strongly aligned with what I guess Stevens believes are and I, I, again these are from his notes so it is he probably didn't intend some of these informational pieces to be openly shared. Um, I'll ask some of the other books, great books in the past where it's just basically journals or notes. So it is influenced heavily by Stephen Hawking's ideas of this is what I believe, this is what I think would be the future gene editing, string theory and why he believes that might be the right path forward. And then the other theme of such a book as well, and when you're going to write brief answers, especially to big questions, right? Big, hairy questions, you want to know the detail quite well. And I think Stephen proves specifically in this book when it comes to, um, I guess, the future that he talks about in the past. There's not so much conversations or big questions about the present, but you can you can see that the articulation by Stephen is quite, quite simple. Quite, it's understandable. So that was the other uh, big piece that it's understandable. But a theme of this book is the ability to look back, very far back. We're talking 13 billion years back or into the future many hundreds and thousands of years is quite succinct. It's quite easily uh, put together. And so it also goes to show that it's someone who's either thought or understands the concepts very, very well. Um, some personal observations uh, fully of mine um, beyond, beyond the, the repetitiveness that are found through this book. Um, I think it's all the, the, the big questions that are answered and again, it's brief, really is just a little taster. So for me, I, I really wish I could dive deep into some of those particular questions, especially the black hole conversations, not by not by 20 pages, but 100 pages. I'd like to know maybe a bit of the history, more of what is to come. There's a lot of notes in this particular book of, hey, we're doing this, we're studying that. This is kind of the next steps that we're looking to do. It could have been elaborated more there. I, I That's what I would have hoped for. Again, personal observations. And while this book Probably wasn't targeting that. That's what it left me feeling like because it was so brief. However, if you're looking for a book that just gives you a really little explainer, gives you a little taste, and then you perhaps go off and do your own research on it, then this might be a book for you. Um, One of the things I didn't like about the book as well was its continual reference to a a time domain, I guess I'll call it, or a boundary or location. So throughout this book, there are, I'm going to guesstimate around 10 references to uh, President Trump, um, and it doesn't really read as though Stephen really enjoys uh, Trump in, in presidency. So this book was actually written in. I'll make sure that I um, 
get this so we're, we're super clear on the timing. It was in 2018. So this is right around the time that, um, and this particular edition was published in 2020. So it was around the time when President Trump was, was around. It also very specifically called out the happenings of North Korea and other world events that were happening right then and then, I guess, when, when this was coming through. On the one hand, you're going to get that when there's personal observation and notes. Two, I guess this, this book was edited by, by the foundation as well. And I almost think that it, it detracts somewhat to a book in its evergreen format when a lot of the, the conversations and the notes are so in the moment where, you know, even now I'm reading this four years on from when it was actually written and some of the comments around, um, you know, Trump and the like, probably while still were relevant at the time and I can kind of conceptualize them, I can imagine in 20, 30 years time, it's sort of doesn't even add any value to the particular book um, when, again, you only have 20, 30 pages per big question that you want to be focusing on and perhaps could have done a better job to just focus in on answering them even more, uh, I guess, better or more elaborately in those spaces that um, it really had. Um, but uh, all encompassing the the actual book, for, for me, I enjoyed it. Uh, would it be a book that I would reread? No. Would it be a book that I would recommend to somebody? Yes. And in the same way that I would recommend someone if they want to get a quick glimpse into these different questions and the way specifically the Stephen Hawking seemed it to be, then go on and recommend and, and read it. If you want to find, you know, an elaborate answers, more detailed answers, more historical information about things like, you know, uh, predicting the future inside black holes is time travel possible there are other books out there personally that i've read before others that have been recommended in fact there's probably videos that would give you a better answers to some of this book but as a contained piece of work with some brevity as well uh, and this was the the perhaps the bit that stunned me the most and i don't know whether this is perhaps stephen hawking himself or it's the way that the publishers actually wrote this Either way, it actually has a lot of humor throughout it, which I found quite amazing. And I don't obviously know the man personally. I normally know a very brief thing about his his history and the life and how he grew up. But he seemed to have a, a real uh, great uh, outlook on life, a, a positive look, in, in fact. And he seemed to be, at least from what the books sort of showcases, to be a pretty uh, humorous man as well. So for me, in summary, I provided and gave this book a 6 out of 10 brief answers to the big questions by Stephen Hawking. Again, I would recommend if you want to have something contained. However, you might be able to find some of these answers in a more elaborate way in other videos, in other books and the like. So I will leave it at that. Once again, folks, we are a value for value podcast here at the Me Immortals Book Reviews, just like we are over in the main channel at the Me Immortals. So if you want to contribute through uh, any Boostergram or streaming, feel free to do so. Podcasting 2.0 apps out there are going to be able to enable you to do that. If you want more information, go and check out all of the videos and content we've put out on the site on how to go about and do that. But for now, I hope you enjoy the book review of Stephen Hawking's Brief Answers to the Big Questions. Mere Mortalites, one out. <laughs>